Hallelujah. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Um, and Shabbat Shalom to our YouTube audience. Uh, let us look to the Most High Yahuwah in prayer. Heavenly Father, you will be just come before you. Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for extending your mercy and grace to us, Father, that we don't deserve. Father, we come before you and we just praise your holy name, Father. For in all things, we give thanks unto you, Yahuwah, our creator. <clears throat> Excuse me. Father, there's no throne above your throne. There's no one as powerful as you. You created the first and the last. You are the Aleph and the Tah, Father. Father, right now, we confess our sins, iniquities, our wickedness, our lawlessness and rebellion that transgress your laws, statutes, commandments, and ordinances, Father. Father, and as we confess them, we repent and we to show back to keeping your laws and doing your laws, statutes, commandments, and ordinances. Ordinances, Father, we renounce and denounce all unrighteous covenants, altars, soul ties, strongholds, and generational curse that are still established or was reestablished in our lives, known, unknown, intentionally done. Father, we stand and intercede for each and every one of our, the Mishpaka throughout GAI and those who are on this call and those who are coming, and for Yashar El scattered to the four corners of the earth. Father, as we enter into this time of prayer, let your Ruach HaKadosh rest upon us. Speak to us, deliver word to your people. Let your name be glorified. Your, let the kingdom of Hasatan be reduced, and let the kingdom of Yahuwah, the creator of the Shamayim and the Eretz, Father, be done in the mighty name of Yusha. So let it be. So, uh, so, so let it. it be. Hallelujah. So let it be. In the sound of the show. So let it be. You hear that? Hallelujah. 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 Right. Hallelujah. So we could be quick, sorry, but my camera is doing his best not to work along with me. All right. So, all right, let's get started. We could be quick. So, since we've been a while for away for a while, let's get started here. The views and opinions and information provided in this teaching may not represent those of the broader Israelite community, camps, congregation, or assemblies. Great Awakening Assembly Bama so the common belief that the Hebrews are scattered to the four corners of the earth via the various slave trades. Those scattered with African ancestry are biblical Israelites. We believe that salvation is by grace through faith in the Messiah. We believe in keeping the covenant, which includes the laws, statutes, and commandments. Common Hebrew terms such as uh, Yahuwah in English, Lord, Elohim, uh, God, Yahshua, or Yahusha, Jesus, or Hamashiach, the Messiah, or the Anointed, um, <clears throat> the Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit, the Basara, Gospel, the Tanakh, um, which is the Torah or the instruction or law, also called the Pentateuch, the Pentateuch, <clears throat> the Nevi'im, Navaim, the Prophets, and the Ketuvim, the Writings, or the, and the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament will be used in place of common English terms for the purpose of relatability. We, the ambassadors of Great Awakening Assembly of Amos, thanks, excuse me, thank you for joining us as we share the good news about who we are, the instructions, the law, and the kingdom of Yahuwah. What we believe. We believe that the time is fulfilled, the prophesied Messiah came and fulfilled the prophecy of Israel's Messiah. We believe that the kingdom of you is at hand and each day draws us closer to the coming kingdom. We believe in repentance, teshuva, which means to turn from your lifestyles of lawlessness and rebellion back to Torah and instructions of Yahuwah. What we believe the Bible, the Tanakh, is the original autographs in the inspired word of, of, of Yah. We believe that the Torah, the five books of Moses, is a comprehensive summary of Yah's foundational laws and ways. We believe that the assembly or the church consists of all Hebrews and Gentile believers who accepted Yahushua Hamashiach as the savior of Israel. We believe in the nine gifts of the Ruach HaKadosh, that Ruach HaKadosh continue to be expressed in the assembly and the church today. We believe in the mandate to be baptized or immersed in the name of your father, Yahuwah, the son, Yahushua Hamashiach, and the Ruach HaKadosh, or the Holy Spirit. We believe in the good news of salvation through faith in Yahuwah, and the belief in the work that Yahushua Messiah has done as written in the Basora and the Torah. A bylaw of great awakening, or the bylaw of great awakening, Bahamas. We at Great Awakening Assembly Bahamas hold strongly to our biblical beliefs in Yahuwah and Yeshua, 
And we understand that as we were once lost sheep that came into the truth, we will have many other believers coming out of various religions into the biblical truth of who Yahuwah and Yeshua truly are by understanding his laws, statutes, and commandments as written in Torah. <clears throat> as it took time for us to become familiar with using Hebrew words and understanding our Hebrew roots, so it will be with you. We pray daily that you allow the Ruach HaKadosh to cleanse you and your vocabulary. And may you open your heart and mind as you journey in rediscovering who Yahuwah, Elohim, Yahusha, Hamashiach, the Ruach HaKadosh, and you truly are as written in the Tanakh and the Brit Hadashah or the Old and New Testament. Hallelujah. Mora Yanera. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Um, I'm going to be giving a lesson that is like an introduction to More Tomiko's continuation of the Abraham series. His next, so he's been speaking of Abraham, Ishak, Jacob, and the, the lineage of, of our ancestors. And he'll be going into depth of the children of Japheth. I'm doing an introduction and this is a lesson that I taught and 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 you're going to actually it you'll be able to take this lesson and tie it to the current day events. We already know what's going on in the news. All you gotta do is just open up the the, the, the the news channel or YouTube and you'll see it. But um don't fret the most high Yah knows what them that call themselves Yasharel are doing here in this land, right? So for us, um, after Sukkot, the word that I kept hearing was deliverance. There were so many people that needed deliverance and came um, broken. And we need to focus. We need to stay focused because Yasharel is coming to us and we have to be in line for receiving these broken people to bring them back, to help their journey on going back to Yahuwah, to, to Shub, to Shub back. So as we continue, um, the purpose of these lessons is to get a gr good foundation on who we are, why we are, why we do, and why not to be distracted by these snares in this world. So I'm going to share. All right. Hallelujah. Slideshow. All right. So, if I am, uh, I'm also going to ask if anyone has any questions, please write a note and ask at the end so we can get through. And then I'm going to come off of YouTube um, so we can answer, ask questions at the end, if you don't mind, Toda. All right. All right, so if we're the chosen people and we know this because we are well-learned people, right? We study, we don't just read the word, the, the, the word of Yah. We, we look at um, DNA, studies of DNA. We've seen that we are the people through the study of um, the skull, we've seen how we are the people because of migration patterns and how those people somehow were in West Africa and they were somehow taken into captivity and they're somehow still here, scattered in the four corners of the earth, right? So if we know that we are the chosen people, who are these people who say that they're the chosen people who call themselves Ashkenazi Jew? So who are these people? All right. So the foundation is a Torah. We go back to Torah for everything, obviously. In Bereshit or Genesis chapter 9, 27, it says Elohim shall enlarge. And I have that highlighted on, for a reason. 
Okay, so Elohim shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. All right, so in verses, in chapter 10, 1 to 5, it says, now these are the generations of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and unto them were sons born after the flood. So what we've all, what I, I know when I was in, when I was, when my eyes were closed or when I had scales in my eyes, whenever I saw the lineage in the Bible, I just skipped over it. I was like, oh, we can't pronounce those words. Oh, it doesn't matter. But we know now as awakened Hebrews that it is important to know who these people are. And you'll see it right here. So in verse two, it says the sons of Japheth, uh, Gimmer or Gomer and Magog, uh, Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Tyrus. And the sons of Gomer are Ashkenaz, Rephet, and Togama. And then it says in verse five, and these are the isles of the Gentiles. When you summarize verses six through 20 of that same chapter, he talks about Ham. And he, they, he didn't call them Gentiles. He said that these were the sons of Ham. And then when you go on to verses 20, 21 to 31, he summarizes the lineage of Shem. And he says, and they were called the sons of Shem. And they were not called Gentiles. The only ones that were called Gentiles were Japheth. It did not go to the next screen. Okay, so this is just a visual. I'm a visual person, so I like to see. So Japheth had many sons. And as you see, Gomer had Ashkenaz. I want you to focus on Ashkenaz. Okay. So let's take a deeper look into Genesis chapter uh, 9, 27. When you read it, it appears that Japheth will follow and take over the territory of Shem as ordained by Yah. So historically, Japheth has invaded um, Yasharel, Africa, India, the Caribbean, and America. All of these countries were all areas of the children of the Shem, but then Japheth invaded them, right? So that goes back to that, that prophecy that he will um, uh, take over the territories of Shem, right? So you may ask, why did Yahuwah allow Japheth to follow Shem and take over his territory. Well, it says it right here in Jeremiah 17, four, and you, even yourself, shall discontinue from your heritage that I gave you. And I will cause you to serve your enemy in the land which you know not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Ooh. So apparently Shem has angered the Most High Yah. And he said, well, why? So, so, so you may ask, why did the Most High Yah allow this? Well, because we messed up historically. <laughs> All right. So if you go deeper into Genesis chapter nine, um, if you look over here in the far right, it says may enlarge. And that is um, Strong's 6601. Okay, so the word enlarge is strong 6601, and that is the word pata. That's what I want you to get from this slide. <laughs> okay, so the word pata means this is a continuation of this strong. So, on this page, it tells you if you can go, you can go online at biblehub.com or get a Strong's book. These are the scriptures that the word uh, pata is in. And then right underneath, it tells you that the word pata means to allure, deceive, enlarge, entice, flatter, persuade, silly one. Now, our English understanding will probably say, hmm, silly one, persuade, flatter, deceive, allure, they all sound not so good, but enlarged to us is a positive thing. Well, clearly it's not, 
in the Hebraic understanding um, in large means the same thing as to deceive or allure, a silly one. In this context, remember we are unlearning and relearning. Okay, so pata means these definitions. Now, pata is only translated in the KJV or, or the Bible that was translated by the other nations as the word enlarge once. Pata was written in the Bible 28 times. And the other 27 times it was translated as seduce, deceive, entice, allure, simple, silly one. So you may ask yourself, hmm, why did the translators in why did the translators want Genesis 9, 27 to say enlarge to make our English minds think positively for that one verse? That's a question you may ask yourself. Now, let's look at the word Japhet. Japhet is who? Japhet. He is the one of the sons of Noah. Jephet, son of Noah, we know that already. But if you look down here, Yefet comes from Pata. Ooh, we get ready to go somewhere. All right. So Jephet or Yefet from Pata. His name means to be simple. So if his name Yefet, if the root word from of his name is pata and pata means simple silly one deceive allure wouldn't that mean that his name jafet or yafet originated from to be simple ooh <laughs> i know when i did this study i was actually smiling because it made me feel happy so Jafet <laughs> Strong's is it's Strong's 3315. Um we, what we just learned is Jafet comes from the root word pata and it means to lore. So he his name literally means silly, silly one. Ask yourself, is this a coincidence? Did the most high Yah do this by accident? Keep in mind that the Hebrew language is a concrete language, and all names have a meaning and a deeper purpose and we know that the most high Yah makes no mistakes and everything ties together there is a reason why Japhet is supposed to take over Shem's territory and his name means silly all right so if we go to Yirmiyahu which is Jeremiah 16 19 it says oh Yahuwah my strength and my fortress <clears throat> and my refuge on the day of affliction and the Gentiles shall come unto you from the ends of the earth and say, surely our fathers have inherited lies, vanity and things wherein there is no profit. So going back to Bereshit chapter 10, who were called the Gentiles? The silly ones. So let's put the silly ones in that sentence. Oh, Yahuwah, my strength, my fortress, my refuge on the day of affliction. The silly ones have come unto you from the ends of the earth. Not my words, y'all. All right. So who were the Gentiles according to the scripture? It's our fault. It's our ancestors' fault and our ancestors put it on us. So we have to bear the burden of this. Praise Yah that he that he did not forsake us and our people. Praise Yah that he knew that such a time as this was going to come where we were going to wake up in our land of captivity and shub back to the Most High Yah and shub. That means turn back to his law, statutes, and commandments. But let's continue. So in uh, in uh, Debraim, which is Deuteronomy, 32, 21, he said, the Most High Yah said, they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not Elohim. 
They have provoked me to anger with their vanities and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. He just called Japheth not a people. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm going to continue. And I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Ooh. Doesn't Jafet mean foolish? Mm. Okay. So I so he so most high said he's going to provoke us to anger with Jafet. Right there. That's scripture. Okay. So if we go down to Romans 10, 19, and it says. But I say, did not Yasharel know? First Moshe, I'm sorry, first Moshe said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people. <laughs> and by a foolish nation, I will anger you. So he's talking to Yasharel. And we are being provoked to jealousy because they're getting our money. The word says that if you bless Yasharel, you'll be blessed. So the world thinks that they got to bless these foolish people. But that money's supposed to be going to us. That's supposed to be our reparations, but we're not getting it. Why? So we're going to be jealous. We're angry as a whole. People, but most of us who aren't awakened don't understand why are we hated so much? Why Why are they loved? I know when before I was awakened, when I was a little girl, I used to ask my mommy, why do those people have everything? They have all the money. They own everything. And are the chosen people? I was a little jealous. Now that I'm awakened, praise Yah, I see. And I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be jealous anymore. I'm just going to sit back and wait. And I'm just going to be focused on the word. Because I know that the Most High is my Redeemer. Hallelujah. All right. So let's go on and continue. Do you need more scripture? Once again, this is not my words. I didn't write this. Yahuwah said, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know he, the, the most high God knows the blasphemy of them that say they are Jew, but are not, but are who? Synagogue of Satan. And then it was so important that he mentioned it again in Revelations 3, 9. That was Revelations 2, 9 that I just read. And now we're going to say it again. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, but are not, but do lie because they know that they're the foolish ones. Well, maybe not the new generations, but their forefathers knew. I'm going to continue. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet to know that I have loved thee. Yahuwah is telling us, don't fret. Don't worry about it. Yep, they are the synagogue of Satan. We are living here on this in this world where the prince of this world is Satan. So of course they're going to have everything. But how many of you know that what we see now is temporal? Life after is everlasting. It's going to last forever. So we have to endure. We have to watch synagogue of Satan take all of our benefits because we're going to get the benefits at the end. He said, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, your feet, Yasharel. And this is not an opportunity for bragging and boasting because he doesn't like puffed up Yasharel. He wants us to be humble. Just know that Yahuwah will redeem us. Hallelujah. All right. So I took a little excerpt excerpts from a couple books. Um, the word Ashkenaz. You know, this, this, this brings me back. I was in a restaurant, my favorite restaurant here in my little town. And, and my little town is um mainly Jewish people. Mm-hmm. And it's a, it's a, um, unawakened Hebrew owned restaurant. And there was a lady in there and she was also a unawakened Hebrew. And she was telling me how she got her PhD in theology. And she is a old Testament scholar. And I said, Oh, really? And I had the biggest smile on my face. And I said, Oh, huh, so you know who the Ashkenazis are? She said, what? I said, you know, the Ashkenazi Jews. She said, 
Yeah, they're the Jews, right? And I said, well, no, but you, but you know they're in the Bible because you said that you was a biblical scholar and it's in the, am I there in Genesis? So I showed her Genesis chapter 10 and how, how what, what I opened up this lesson with and she got quiet. She didn't know. Why is that? Because they want to hide it. Okay, let's go on. So Ashkenaz, the son of Gomer or Gog from the biblical Gog and Magog. And we're not going to talk about the biblical prophecy of what Gog and Magog is going to do, right? But just go to your word and you will see it. Um, this would make Ashkenaz the grandson of Japheth. Based on the biblical and historical accounts, the Khazar Ashkenaz Jews are Gog and Magog. The families of Gog and Magog inhabited the territories of modern day Europe, Russia. I'm under, so let me, I'm going to go to this paper that I wrote. All right. Can you guys see my screen? What, can you go to this? Okay, good. So this is a paper. I'm getting my PhD studies. I'm sorry. I'm getting my PhD in Hebraic Biblical Studies. And I had to write a paper on the Balfour Agreement. And a section in my paper, um, I wrote, who are these Jews? Like, where did they originate from? So I'm going to read a little bit of my paper. The European Jews, and this is not information that just made up. Jewish people have books to tell us that they are from the Khazar kingdom. So this is not blasphemy. And this is definitely, from my YouTube audience, this is definitely not anti-Semitic, which is a made up word. Okay, so my so in my paper, it says the European Jews were originally from the Khazar kingdom that lived deep in Asia. As a result of their warlike behavior and culture, the Asiatic kingdom drove them out of in, into Europe, into Eastern Europe, where they set up the Khazar kingdom. And here's my references. Um, at this time, they were a uh, phaltic worshipers which basically means they were pagans so the khazars were were pagans okay so the khazar empire was the victor over the arabs and they warred for several hundred years um so there was a marriage arrangement between an arab woman and a khazar prince and as a result of this political marriage, it was around the time that the king of Khazar and his court um, embraced the Jewish faith because the Arabs also were Torah keepers, right? So it was a political agreement that the Khazars now supposedly keep Torah and Judaism then became the Khazar state religion. So they were, they, but they were still remained the warlike people, conquering lands and moving throughout the, the years. Um, the Jewish Khazars comprise of Turkish speaking um, Karaites <clears throat> of Crimea, Poland, Russia, and other nations of Europe. Okay. The people of the book were not from Europe, but I, I digress. Um, this, okay, so, so I'm going to my next paragraph. The story of the Khazar empire has emerged to look like a cruel hoax in history, a story of a people who claim to be the descendants of Semitic people, but only converted after a marriage that was proposed to be a political agreement between two nations. All right. So, um, and this is just studies that I found, scholarly research, information is out there. I think the reason, well, I, I know the reason why many of us are deceived is because we don't study. We trust the researcher. Well, the Most High Yah has awakened Yasharel and many of us are becoming scholars. 
out there researching, looking up the truth, information that is already there. If you recall, uh, many, many of you are old enough to know this, this uh, stereotype. If you want black folks to stay to stay in the dark, put it in a book. How many of you remember that? I know I do. So now these black folks are reading those books and we're and our eyes are being opened. Hallelujah. Okay. So we're gonna go to this uh this insert from the 13th tribe, which tribe, which is written by a Jewish uh European Jewish man. He said the Jewish people in Israel and next door to you in the United States are descendants of Khazars. Well, whoop de doo As stated in the hidden treasure that lies in plain sight four by another Jewish man, um, he says that his people descended from the family of Magog. So he said, he let us know that in the year uh, 7040, um, there was a king that had a conference and he invited people from Christianity, Islam, and Israelites. And they discussed the three doctrines and it was ununanimously agreed upon that the Israelite doctrine was the closest to the truth of the scriptures. So that's why they chose that after that marriage, okay? Um, if you go in, in, in the book, The Hidden Treasure That Lies in Plain Sight 4 by Jeremy Shorter, it says, according to the Microsoft Encarta, 85% of Jews today are Ashkenazim. So Ashkenaz is the grandson of Japhet. And if you were here in my uh, studies in, in my lesson, in my presentation before, Japhet means silly one, foolish people. All right. Um, all right. Okay. So the Khazars converted to the Jews. The Most High Yah said be, he wants us to be transformed and not converted to the world. But these Khazars, who were Faltic worshipers, pagans, they were warlike people. They came from the mountains. They were the Neanderthals in the mountains and they were warlike. That's all they knew was to kill, steal, destroy and promote themselves. All right. And these are the people that the world knows as the Jewish people of the book. Um, Hitler. Now, I am not a promoter of Hitler because he didn't like us either. He knew who we were, but he didn't like us either. But he also knew who his people were. The Holocaust, we, everyone, if you talk to any Jewish person today, and if we talk about the atrocities that has been happening to us for the past 400 years, a Jewish person, I know this has happened to me several times, a Jewish person will say, well, you know what I, you know that I know what you're talking about. We had the Holocaust. Um, I also did a study, uh, a paper on the Holocaust, and I'm like, what, what, what they went through pales at the comparison of what we went through. But okay, um, the Holocaust is used today to deceive the world in believing that what was done to them fit the curses stated in Deuteronomy 28. However, from leaked documents, now these documents were were from. Um, Hitler was in prison and his guard. So you all know that when you're in prison, um, you know, the guards have more information on the people, on the people that they're that they're, that they're guarding. This is leaked information from the prison guard um, that he was trying to defend this nation from the Freemasons, the Illuminati and the Jews. He said that that's why he um, enslaved the Jewish people because he knew who they were. 
he stated that if the Americans who possess the jewels of God, which are us, win the war, they will convert the world, the world and forever be a slave to the Jews and will try to conquer God. He stated that the Americans have stolen God's precious jewels, that's us, the true Hebrews, the Negroes. That's from Hitler. Now, in the Zondervan Bible, it says that because when I was growing up, I was told that I was a descendant of Ham. But when you do research, it says that Ham is the progenitor of the dark races, but not the Negroes. We are the Negroes. We know that we're the Negroes because we've been called Negro. We call ourselves Negro. And now, now that I'm awakened, I don't see anything wrong with that word Negro. I'm proudly wear the title of Negro. Okay. So, um, the Jews planned on moving uh, the false image of white Jews into the state of Yasharel. Um, and of course, they knew who we were. All right. So how did the Khazars gain control of the world? Um, through conquer. They were warlike people. They killed people. They moved, conquered, defeated, enlarged their territory. That's what they do everywhere they move to. So the Jews today, if you know them, they own everything. They they own the, the they, they run the finance um, industry, steamship, the press. Um, now Hollywood, that paints the picture for everyone in the world. They own the banking system, the merchant banking industries, okay? They take over because of their influence. And of course, the Balfour Agreement. And that's how they got the land that they have uh, ruined today. Because the, even the word says that until their time is fulfilled, they are going to try down the land. I personally don't think that that is the land, but that's another topic. And we're not going to get into that today. And I haven't done that study. So um, I'm definitely, I don't have the, the, the resources or the receipts to uh, discount that land, but I, I don't believe so. Okay, so ancient DNA. Now, I wanted to show you guys this. That's to show you how they um, hide things. There's a website that talks about the ancient DNA of the Ashkenazi Jews. And um, if anyone wants this web website, I will be happy to give it to you. It's on the slides. So when you read this small, it's only a two minute read and you can take a screenshot if you want and read it in your free time. It doesn't really say anything. It doesn't say that, it says that these are people that were in Europe and then in Germany, which is Europe, and then all of a sudden they changed and now they're different people, but it doesn't say anything. They have been able to remove the truth from the web to hide their true uh, origins. Take a screenshot. But it basically, this little short snippet does not say who it 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 literally talks around who they are. Okay, so let the Most High God's word be true, and every word from man be a lie. So what does the word say? The word says that guess what? They're going to take crafty counsel against your people, and consult against the, your hidden ones. And they have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. And that name of Yasharel will be no more in remembrance. Because if you think about it, if the Jewish people took our heritage, why don't they call themselves Yasharel or Israel? 
because the word says that the name of Israel will be known no more. They don't want us to remember that name because something in our DNA might, the, like if, we, if they call themselves Yasharel or Israel, something in our DNA might be triggered and remember, but because they call themselves Jewish, and that isn't even a word because the letter J is the newest letter in the English alphabet, there's nothing in our DNA that attaches ourselves to the word Jewish. Everything was crafty to hide us, to keep us ignorant, to keep us uninformed of who we are and our true power. Um, in Yirmiyahu 17, 4, and it says, and you, even yourself, shall discontinue from your heritage that I gave you, that's Yahuwah, and will cause you to serve your enemies in the land which you have known not. For you have kindled a fire in my anger, which burned forever. I read that before in a sl previous slide. And in Deborah 32, 26, it says, I said, that's Yahuwah, I will... I would scatter them unto the corners and I would make them, I would, and I would make the remembrance of them to cease um, from among men. Woo. If you just think of that, that is powerful. The Most High Yah said that Yasharel was the only nation that he ever knew. Like he said that we are his firstborn. So basically his baby, his baby, his firstborn, Yasharel, he said that, listen, you didn't keep my law, countries, and commandments. Okay. All, all right. Well, well, you're going to get scattered. And that name that I love so much, that the Most High loves so much, and he called us Yasharel, no one's going to remember, remember it. That's why today when us awakened, we go around and say, yes, I'm Yasharel. I'm Hebrew. People are like, what? They don't even realize that the Bible is a book of Yasharel, even though it says it all throughout, because there's something in mental paralysis. It's like you're reading a book and don't even know what it really says. Why? Because the Most High Yah made a command that it's not going to be remembered. Even in the Barit Hadashah in Acts 7, 6, it says, and Elohim spoke on this wise that his seed shall sojourn in a strange land and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil for 400 years. There's no other nation that has been in a land in captivity, in bondage, and people have treated us evil for that long a time. I have uh, so one of my one of my um, close my close friends, my sisters. She 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 came across she, the Most High Yah speaks to her in a profound way, and it's amazing. Every every time she talks, I'm like, wow, that's just deep. So uh, and I'm not and uh, maybe you can talk about it if you're if you're still on here, Jackies, um, after we close out. But she was saying, and this is just a rabbit hole that we're not going to go down, I promise. But you know how the word says that a thousand uh, ye years is one day to the Most High Yah? So is that concept of a thousand years to a one day supposed to apply when we're reading this 400 years prophecy? That's a question. I'm just throwing it out there. If you want to take it, and start doing some research, you go right on ahead. <laughs> All right. So the prophecy fulfilled through Japheth. So in order for prophecy to be fulfilled, Yahuwah had to use the silly ones or the foolish ones to deceive the world. However, it's not over. We are waking up and we're beginning to Tashuva. In the book of Barak, Barak, that's the first book of Barak, chapter 2, 30 to 35, it says, and it, uh, this is paraphrase, we, we will awaken and begin to praise Yahuwah in our land of captivity 
and return from our stiff neck ways and deeds and remember the ways of our fathers who sinned against Yahuwah. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their Elohim and they shall be my people. Hallelujah. And I'm going to continue in that passage. Um, if you're if you want to follow along at a later date, um, if you go to first Baruch chapter four, and this is an encouragement to stay in your word. The word says to live your word with talk, talk about your word when you sit down, when you rise, when you lay down, when you walk about. He says to meditate it on it day and night. Now go to first Baruch chapter four and it reads. Chapter four, verse 28, it reads, for as it was your mind to go astray from Elohim, that's when you were unawakened. So being returned, seek him 10 times more. So just think about what you were doing when you were unawakened and when you thought you were living for Elohim, for Yahuwah, but you weren't and you were in this world. I know I did what I wanted to do and no one was going to tell me what I wasn't going to do. I was one of those strong-willed black women that didn't need a man. And I mean, it was this curse, you know, that, that, that was me. Praise God, the Most High God has healed me has been able to allow me to shoo back to his law, statutes, and commandments. I know my role. I know my purpose. And being with a man does not weaken a woman. It actually is our design. It strengthens us. But if the word says in First Baruch chapter 4, 28, that just as it was your mind to go astray, now that your return, seek him 10 times more. So when I was living in the world, I, I did my own thing. So 10 times more is a whole lot for the most high. That's why our day is supposed to be centered around his word, even when we're working. You know, when I when I work, I have in, in the background a lesson going on from YouTube or I'm listening to set apart music because I'm strengthening my Ruach. Um, I had a, a conversation with another sister and she was saying, she was talking, she was telling me about her dream and how she was being attacked um, in her dream. And she asked, well, I, I, I was telling her about how your Ruach, your spirit will fight for you, but your spirit can't fight if it don't have muscles. How do you give your Ruach muscles? <laughs> Pick up this book. And that's it. Read the book. Study the book. Study the word. This word literally brings you life, liberty. It literally is like, and, and, I, and I'm not saying read, please don't when you pick up this book, just read the parts that make you feel good. I'm saying go to Torah, go to Genesis chapter one, verse one, and start right there. <laughs> and then, if, uh, as you read, if you want a supplement to Genesis, go to Joshua, go to Jubilees, go to Enoch. It gives more details about what's going on in Genesis. And then the word will begin to strengthen your Ruach. So as you have dreams and, and you're attacked in your dreams or you experience different things, you're able to recognize it there because your Ruach, your spirit, has muscles. I want to give you a, 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 when I was, when I, when the Most High Yah um, sent me to my, to my future husband, Moray Tomiko, I just did not believe in all that spiritual warfare stuff. I didn't. And I was already two years awakened. I never experienced it. I thought that people that said they did, they were lying. I never believed it. Well, the most high guy had a plan for me because I was attacked in my dream. And I was like, what in the whole world? And, I, and I'm not lying to myself, right? So um, I called Moray Miko and he told me, I was like, okay, he said, well, I've been telling you, you got to pray, you got to fast. <laughs> and 
and that my experiences made me a believer. Like there was a dream and I was in this house. I, apparently it was my house. I don't know. But the, someone knocked on the door and it was this white woman and she had blonde hair and she had me, Maury Miko slumped over. He was really weak and she delivered him to me and I opened the door and I was like, get off my man. And I, and I pulled him inside and he sat down and she looked at me and said, well, aren't you going to uh, say, say thank you? And I said, Damon, if you don't get out of my face and go back where you came from. And she started shape-shifting. Her face started shifting and her hair started changing from red to brunette to orange. And I said, look at here, Damon, you don't scare me. She came, she, she charged me really fast as if to scare me. This is all in my dream. And I looked at her like, oh, you trying to scare me? Do you not know who I, who, what, what authority I operate in? You better get out of here, you demon. And so she left. <laughs> and that is clearly, now I, 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 I woke up, I, I realized that that was not about Maury Miko because Maury Miko was not a weak man to be delivered all slumped over. The purpose of that was for this, for the spirits to gain some type of control over me through fear. But they didn't, they were mad because they couldn't scare me. And it has happened a couple of other times where um, there was one demon that was, we, I was at a party and it was more a Miko. See, the, the, the demons always use more a Miko because they know how much I love him. And they know that I will probably look at a person that looks like him in my dream. Right. So this man that was, I thought was my, was, was, was my Miko came to me. And he was like, come on, let's go down here. And he was, he wasn't acting like himself. He was, he was acting really fruity actually. And, and my man is not fruity at all. So he started running down the hallway, this dark hallway to a bathroom and half, and I'm, he's running, skipping and I'm walking down like, what is wrong with this man of mine? So I get halfway down the, the hallway and I said, that's not you, because you wouldn't do this. You always hold my hand and walk calmly and walk like a man and walk and walk like you got some sense. You walk like you have authority. That's not my man. So I so I I said, <laughs> I rebuked the demon. I said, go away. You don't have any power. I woke up and I started praising the most high God. I started rebuking um 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 this, this Hasatan that was trying to overtake me in my spiritual realm. Why am I saying all this? We have to strengthen our Ruach so that our Ruach can fight for us in our dreams. And I know that this was a little rabbit hole away from the Jafet, but the purpose of me saying this is we shall not fret over what's going on. Will this a war? Will, will this current war that we're in, War Wolf Three, they're calling it, affect us? Maybe, maybe not. But is your trust in this world system, or is it in Yahuwah? We're going to win. We have to endure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I, I. Uh, that is the end of my lesson. We can have a, uh, uh, we can talk about it at the end. Um, I want to say Shabbat Shalom to my YouTube audience. May the Most High God keep you. No? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Maury Miko was going to talk. Oh my. Sorry, he is getting set up. I was going to end. So I pray that you all enjoy the lesson and he is going to share the slide. We're going to be getting uh, work. So in December the 2nd, Great Awakening International is having a humanitarian effort in the Bahamas. And um, I'm not streaming, but we 
are going to upload this uh, recording after we get off. Yeah, I'll be able to see it. So, um, yes. So Great, so Great Awakening International is having a humanitarian effort December the 2nd. We're going on a cruise to the Bahamas, to Nassau, and we're going to have a humanitarian effort, a community outreach, and we definitely need the help of Yasharel. Okay, I'm going to give it over to Mori Miko. Ready to Can you all hear me? Okay, awesome. Yeah, Silence definitely. says yes. Uh, uh, but all praises to the Mosai uh, for you know in era and the work that she diligently do so effectively. Um, it's a blessing to have someone at your side who can, who understands the work and is not afraid to do the work. So, um, one of the things, and I could speak to certain parts, I'm going to be real quick. I just wanted to point this out to you because I, listen, I went into reading the book of Yasher, Jubilees, and Genesis and comparing them all, and I was trying to find a trail of the sons of Japhet. And there's so much has been taken out. So we're going to touch on go one of Gomer's son and show you uh, something. So when you look at Genesis 10, it says the son of Japhet, uh, the sons of Tread were Gomer and Magog and the rest, and we know that. And the sons of Gomer were Ashkenaz, Rifat, and Togomer. So when I read Yasha chapter 10, and it says the sons, <clears throat> excuse me, the sons of Noah went and built themselves cities in the places where they were scattered, and they called their cities after their names. And the sons of Japhet were divided upon the face of the earth into many divisions and languages. And the children of Gomer, according to their cities, were the Francom who dwell in the land of France, by the river France, by the river Sina. I spent about an hour and a half searching the internet, trying to find some type of connection to this group of people. Literally couldn't find it. Then I began to look after the probably without, then I began, I found an article that says, uh, many of the names were changed. So now I'm going to, I have to try to look for the, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to try to look for the, the names, but I just wanted to point this one out that I found, the Frankum. All right. Uh, and this is written, this is the son of, the grandson of Jafet. And what I found from the familysearch.org is that the Frankum name meaning is of English on Norman origin status name from the Anglo-Norman French uh, feudal term Frank Holm, Freeman, composed of elements. And it's a type of uh, what a metal, a metal that called, I think it's called Frank, Frank, Frank I can't remember, Frank Seum. Uh, it's a certain type of metal from the Latin word homo. Um, so the word Frankum is of English origins. Uh, just this is a little, quick little piece I wanted to share. Uh, the surname Franken was first found in Hunting, Huntingdonshire. You know, you know, Negroes lived there, where they held a family seat as lords of the manor. The Saxon influence of the English history diminished after the Battle of Hastings in 1066. The language of the courts was French for the next three centuries and the Norman ambience prevailed, but the Saxon surname survived and the family name was first referenced in the 13th century when they held estates in that shire. And this is a brief a bit about the early history of the Frankum. The webpage shows only a small episode from the Frankum research covering uh, the years 12, 34, 73 and so on. And there are other things included in some of the early history, which I'm still reading. And also there are very, when I talk about, um, 
but for the for the last few hundred years, the English language had no far system of spelling rules for that reason. Spelling variations are commonly found in early Anglo-Saxon surnames. Over the years, many variations of the Francom were recorded, including Francom, 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 Frankham, uh, Francham, Francham, a whole bunch, even Franklin. Uh, and Frank Franken, and many more. Early notables of the Franken family pre-1700. Um, more information is included under the stopping early Franken notables in a PDF. Uh, it wouldn't allow me to download it. Um, so this is just uh, on some of the migration of the Franken family. Um, just wanted to bring this out. Uh, uh, <clears throat> To show you the point of there are a group of people that is called the uh, Frankum from the line of Jafet that exists today, and it is very much held quiet. And when I began to try to look up some of the other names, it's like it's a total blank. I, I use that DuckDuckGo search engine too. Uh, to try to search some things, and um, still nothing, nothing came up. So it's almost like this information, and when you begin to take a deeper look and to try to find these biblical heritage, even some of the online biblical dictionaries, you cannot find these 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 names. Um, they are spread, or like you saw, yeah, they changed them up. So it it it's going to take some more work when to begin to tie uh, these names um, together. But we do have some announcement I want to <clears throat> just make. Uh, one of them being, you know, tomorrow is today is Shabbat, so um, feel free to join the one of our many Shabbats um, all over. Um, they will share, this will be shared over as well, too. And remember our weekly prayer calls that we have um, Sundays for women, Mondays for men, Wednesday for men, and Fridays also for the men and join us on tomorrow for Shabbat Moria Nera will be hosting Shabbat on tomorrow for the Kenya Worship Hub and then we have the Ghana Worship Hub you can tune into that's on the fly as well and the UK Worship Hub as well woohoo for Beth and Richard and the rest and then on Wednesdays, we have our prayer that we meet on Wednesday at 9 p.m. Please share and encourage people to come in because we want to grow and help get our people out of this uh, stronghold. And then Sunday, like I said, for the women, Weeping Daughters of Rachel. And if you want to subscribe to one of the various YouTube channels that we have, that's Great Awakening Madison, Ohio, Indy, Orlando, Detroit, Columbus and the Bahamas, you can subscribe to uh, any one of our channels. This message will be uploaded on Great Awakening Bahamas channel too. And then our HAI Academy, it's already started, right? When is it opening up in there? It will be opening up on 29th and offer a whole, uh, a wide array of degrees and diplomas <laughs> and certificates. And also, pre-prepare, prepare yourself, prepare yourself. Next year, we are preparing a three-country tour. Oh, Beth, raise your hand. Go ahead, Beth. Oh, no, I'm waiting for <laughs> when we're offline. Okay. All right. We're preparing a three-country tour um, on the continent of Africa. So we're still working on the details. So just prepare yourself, prepare yourself for that, for those who want to go. And this, like as Morinia said, we will be sailing to the Bahamas on a cruise and for a wedding and for a humanitarian uh, trip in our Awake the Islands humanitarian mission, uh, leaving on December 1st from Fort Lauderdale. And once we leave there, we're headed to the Bahamas, my hometown on the Bain and Grandstown park where we're going to do a community outreach we will have singing um also be praying uh there will also be we'll be telling them about who we are what we do 
And if you want to give, I encourage you to, to forgive because all proceeds uh, will be directed not to Great Awakening Bahamas, but excuse me, the links you can donate down below right now. You see Great Awake INT or pay, or PayPal me at Great Awake INT. Uh -huh. Everything will be going directly to that. And when you send it, just make sure you put a message that for humanitarian uh, <clears throat> mission in the Bahamas. It's going to be great. I think our, our budget, we our estimated budget is at 10,000 right now. That's to take care of everything. We're trying to um, reach 400 persons, give them community uh, um, pamphlets, food, clothing, and hygiene products. And then the ICAD community. Uh, for those who are to go, uh, we show the video of it and we have opened up uh, the giving portal so you can give towards Zilan as the Mosai has rest upon your heart. That is always how you give. We Great Awakening is in the process of uh, potentially acquiring this land. It's still on the market. Uh, we haven't uh, gotten it yet, but this is something that we're believing the most high for. Uh, we, we're trying to get it as quick as possible. We're holding faith, hopefully by Passover, we could get it. That's not set in stone yet, but we want that's as our faith move and faith belief. So if the Moses has rested upon your heart, donate to our land and we will one day be able to go someplace that we can call our own. Hallelujah. And that is it. Okay. But I'll go back to the slide. The the oh, the cash up is dollar sign great awake G R E A T A W A K E I N T. That's the cash up. The PayPal is dollar sign PayPal dot me forward slash great awake I N T. So you can give for the humanitarian aid. We have already got the person's book to go, and so we're just waiting on. I will be getting married on the second on the beach. And for those who come in, leave the heels home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So <laughs> maybe let's pray us out now so we can go. So let's look to the most high in prayer. Heavenly Father, you we just come before you. We praise you. We magnify and we glorify your name. Father, thank you for a wonderful Shabbat that we are able to be alive and to just magnify and glorify your name and to also share your word, share your basura to your people, Father. And as we begin to share this amongst each other, we're strengthening each other for the wider community that will one day come in. May you bless, keep, and heal all those who need healing on YouTube and on the Zoom meeting. In the mighty name of Yusha, so let it be. So, so Shabbat Shalom. shalom. So let it be. Hallelujah. So Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat shalom. And um, you, those who are on Zoom. Did you put YouTube? Those who are on Zoom, you can stay on. Um, and we'll say Shabbat Shalom to YouTube.